What's going on, Beer fans? Welcome back to Beer Review. Today, we're gonna be going over 20 plus more hidden tricks in all newer BMWs. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, Beam Review, what we do here is showcase all the latest BMWs. We also do some really cool hidden tips and tricks and showcase all the latest features. So if that's something that you guys wanna stay in tune with, subscribe to the channel because we put our content every single week. For this part three video, we're gonna be going over 20 plus more hidden tricks. But before we get started, I did want to mention these really cool BMW key fob covers. They are sold and shipped through Amazon. So I know that you all will love that. So definitely check that out at the end of the video. The links for those are going to be right down below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first off and foremost, did you all know that there is a keyboard within the iDrive screen? Now there is a way to access it. The way that you would do that is let's just say, for example, if you were to go into navigation, and then the next thing, if you were to go into where to, now you all are familiar with this screen where we have to turn the dial to get to the letter, but honestly, that's too much work. So in the newer BMWs with iDrive 7, they have this really cool feature where you can summon a keyboard right over here. If you click on this button right here, it actually brings up a keyboard and now you can type in wherever you wanna go. Now for this next one, many may already know this, but many newer BMW owners may not. So as you can see right over here, we do have our wiper stick. And if we were to zoom into it, this is the control switch to control our rear view wiper that we have way back there. Now, of course, if I go back here and turn on the on switch for it, our rear window wiper is going to go ahead and go to work. But did you know that if you go ahead and push this even further, it will actually spray and clean the rear view glass. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So what we're going to do is go ahead into on and, and then we're going to push it even more. And what that will do will actually wipe the rear view glide and I'll just do it one more time so you guys can all see it but right now it's in the on switch and I'm going to push it even further and as you can see it does wipe the rear glass now for this next one you may not have to use this quite often but there is a way to do a reset for the sunroof now what I mean by that is say for example if for whatever reason your sunroof just started to malfunction and you notice that it wasn't opening or closing what you could do is a sunroof reset. Now there is a way to do that. All you have to do is hold this in for about 30 seconds and then just let the sunroof do its full cycle. Now watch this. I just pushed it in and I'm gonna hold it the whole time. And I'm gonna fast forward the video just a little bit just so you all don't have to wait this whole time. So as you can see, the sunroof is starting to do a full cycle. And I've been holding this down for about 20 seconds now. And I'm gonna hold it down the whole time as well. What you're gonna see is the shade go front and back and then you're also gonna see the Glasgow front and back as well. And then once you know whenever it's all set, then the whole process is gonna to come to a full stop. And that's how you do a sunroof reset. Now, if you already didn't know that yes, we do have a compartment right down here where you, you can fold up to get all this additional space. But did you know there is also another compartment right here where if you pull this back, you can actually see that there is another storage place right down there. Now you can put whatever you want here. I will say that it is a pretty good spot to hide your illegal items or nips or whatever. So definitely use that to your advantage so you don't get caught. So for this next one, it is gonna be preconditioning. Now preconditioning is very, very useful. If you're gonna quickly just go out your vehicle for a quick 15 minutes or so, or if you're leaving a pet inside the vehicle or even your children as well. Now what preconditioning can do is different from remote start. If your country allows remote start, it will let the engine on so you can blow heat into the vehicle. But what preconditioning does is just keep the fans blowing within the vehicle. So it keeps the vehicle a nice cool room temperature. Now there is a way to do that if your car is on and if you just turn this off, the first menu that you're gonna see is preconditioning and ventilation. You're gonna most likely be seeing this every single time you get into your vehicle. Preconditioning is very, very useful. Again, if you're just gonna do a quick run, you can simply just start this. And if you listen closely and look right down here where it says the climate control, you can see that preconditioning is now on. You can also tell right here because it does give you the option to stop the function, but preconditioning is on within the vehicle. And now at this time, you can actually go out your vehicle, you can lock your car, and then preconditioning will stay on. Now, when you come back from getting your groceries, your vehicle will be nice and cool. Now for this next one, we get this question all the time. So what are these three lights that we have below here? Nearby are lighting controls. So what these three buttons are, are gonna be park light. If you're viewing this from the United States, we usually do not use this as much, but what park lights are very, very useful is whenever you're parked in a very, very dark spot. So basically this P with a flasher on the left side will turn on your rear left park light. These right here in the middle are gonna be your standard park lights. The one on the right is gonna be your back right tail light as well. Now what park lights are very, very useful for is if you're parked again in a very, very dark spot, it will let people know that your vehicle is there so they can visibly see a light on your tail light. So then that way 
they don't crash into your car. It is a great, great feature to use, especially if you're in the city or if you notice that the weather might be inclement as well and people may not see that you're parked on the side of the road. It is very, very useful for situations such as those. Also, this one's a cool little tip. For the B2B owners that may have a sedan, you obviously are not gonna have a rear glass wiper. So one of the things that you could do whenever it's raining to clear up your rear glass is that you could actually use your rear defroster for the rain as well too. Yes, we use it for snow and ice all the time, but I would recommend using this whenever it is raining as well too. And you would be surprised on how great of a job it does for the sedan on keeping that rear glass clean. Also, so this was a really cool fun fact and you may not know this at all, but did you know that all the BMWs, they have a cool little cutout right down here as you can see and you'll also see some yellow wax right along here too now all the bmws they have this this one is kind of hard to see because the vehicle is black but did you know that this is the drain hole for whenever water seeps through your door the rain will actually exit straight out of here and this yellow glue that is right here that is actually there to make sure that there is no rust or corrosion as you can see this is the driver's side door but all four doors they all have it right here we're, we're on the back left side and there is one right over here too. Now, speaking of drain holes, there is also another one that you may al already have seen, but of course all vehicles, they have one right down here too for your gas. So if you do happen to spill your gas whenever you're filling it, do not worry because there is a hole right down here where the gas will exit. Also, while we're here, we will also, also touch up on whatever this guy is too. Now, BMW uses the same cutout for X5s that might be diesel. So what this cutout is for where the death fluid will go for the X5s that are diesel. Obviously here in the US, you're not gonna see too much of diesel X5s here, but in many of the other countries where they might have a diesel vehicle, the death fluid will go right into here. And BMW again uses the same cutout for regular vehicles and even diesel cars as well. So let's talk about the SOS button, which is right over here. We did we did touch up on this in the last video, so we're not gonna go too in depth with it. But one huge, huge safety feature that I wanted you guys to all know about is that BMW has a safety feature where if the airbags go off within the vehicle, you actually don't even have to call 911. The SOS will trigger all by itself. And not only that, BMW will know how many people are within the vehicle as well too. Because again, those airbag sensors that know whenever somebody is sitting down within the seats will actually let the emergency services know about that as well on how many people are sitting within the vehicle so they know exactly how many emergency vehicles to send your way and also last but not least the sos will let bmw assist know your location which will save valuable minutes and seconds to saving somebody's life now this one's a pretty easy one and i hope that everyone knows about this but did you know that you can still open your driver's side door without unlocking the vehicle all you have to do is just pull on the handle now, one of the reasons why I mentioned this one is because this is a X5. Now, many of the other BMWs, especially the older ones, you actually have to pull on the handle twice. One, two. So definitely keep that in mind if you have one of the older BMWs. You have to pull on that twice to have the door unlock itself all by itself without hitting the unlock button. Another easy one for you all. Did you ever wonder what this little box is way up here? There's also one on the passenger side way down there too. Well, if you don't know what this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually your microphone for whenever you're on a phone call or whenever you're trying to do voice commands, your microphone is gonna be located right over here. Now what this next one is, is for the vehicles that have remote engine start. Now, did you know that if you have the My BMW app, you could actually schedule your remote engine start. So it's say, for example, if you wanted to go off every morning at 8 a.m., you could actually go into your app, click on the schedule departure setting, and then you can schedule your remote start to go on at a certain time within the day. And again, remote start will stay on for about 15 minutes and then it will turn off all by itself. This one's a good one if you have iDrive 7 with this live cockpit pro. Did you know that you can change the screen that is in the middle right here? Now, the way you do that is you have to go into settings. So let's go and do that together. So if we go into car, which is located right over here, and then we go into settings, and then if you scroll to the right where it says displays, because we're gonna be changing that display right there, go ahead and click on that. And then the one that you wanna click on is instrument panel. Now, as we're looking at this menu item right here, central area display, that is the one you wanna click on. And then if you actually do not like anything there, you could actually turn off that feature. And right there, I hit off. So now that does clear up the whole screen as well. But let's just say, for example, the other option that we have is root preview. Now, if you click on root preview, it's not gonna show anything right now. You might just see this right here. But what root preview will do is whenever you're using your BMW navigation, 
it will actually show your next turns that are going to be taking place right here smack dab in the middle now as we're talking about the different types of changes that we could do here for many of the bmw now again this one is a x5 but as we're still inside but as we're still inside the central display area if we go back into it one more time they have this really cool mode called reduce mode now if you don't know what reduce mode is you're about to see what this can do it's pretty cool if i hit it it will actually make everything here completely reduced and that will make things nice and simple this next one is going to be very useful if you happen to touch the paddle shifters by accident so if you do not know what this plus and this minus can do it will actually help you switch your own gears such as first gear second gear third gear or you can go backwards and downshift on this side let's just say for example you're driving and you accidentally hit one of these paddle shifters by accident so let's just say for example you're driving and you accidentally hit one of these paddle shifters by accident and then the next thing you know is that your vehicle is going to be in a manual shifting mode now don't get scared because if you do hit it by accident while you're in drive your manual mode will go back into regular drive after about 15 seconds but let's just say for example you hit it by accident and then you quickly just wanted to get out of that manual mode of switching gears what you could do is simply just hold this down for about three to four seconds and then before you know it it will bring you back into the automatic drive mode for this next example let's just say for example you want the doors to unlock whenever you arrive at your destination there is a setting to do that by default it is off so we're just going to quickly enable it now the way you do that is you simply go right over here into car once again and then you're going to go into settings once you go into settings scroll all the way over to where it says doors and vehicle access and then scroll down to where it says unlock at the end of trip now what unlock at the end of trip does of course is simply the doors will unlock as soon as you arrive at your destination and it will do that as soon as you put your vehicle in the park also while we are in this menu as well there is another cool hidden option right down here as well now i'm sure you all are familiar with whenever you lock and unlock your vehicle it does make that beeping sound for many you might live in a really quiet neighborhood and you do not like that beeping sound or letting people know say for example whenever you just got home so there is a way to turn off or disable that beeping sound whenever you lock and unlock your vehicle so the way you do that is in the menu that we're already in we're just simply going to go straight down and right over here where it says sound when unlocking and locking you simply just want to turn that off and when you do that whenever you lock and unlock your vehicle it will not make a single sound this one is a good one if you like to switch your drive modes a whole lot and what i mean by drive modes is going to be the sport comfort and eco now of course you can use your finger and go straight down here but let's just say for example you are somebody who likes to keep their eyes on the road the easiest way to do that is also by using voice command again voice command is so so powerful you can tell it to roll down a window and then you could even tell it to do things like this change drive mode to sport i have activated the sport mode as you can see we just use voice command to go into sport mode you can also use it to go into eco pro as well bmw also has a safety feature that is within many of the older bmws as well but as you can see the mirrors are folded in did you all know that if you begin to go ahead and pick up speed let's just say for example 10 or 15 miles per hour the side mirrors will actually open all by themselves for this next one we're going to be going over the tow hook now as you can see the tow hook is right over here also if you didn't know where your wheel lock key was if you have wheel locks on your rims you're most likely gonna find that right over here underneath this compartment but let's just say for example if we needed to plug this guy into our vehicle to get it towed now all you have to do is simply just pull this guy out and then what you would have to do is go back here and as you can see that there is a cutout for your for your tow hook there is one in the front too now if you're not sure on how to get this cover out if you look very very closely there is an arrow right in here too so that's what you would press to take out the cover and that's where the tow hook mount would go also in the back seats of course we do have a pull out to get our cup holders and armrests right in the middle here but did you know that there is another tab right here too now let me show you what this one do so let's just say for example of course we can fold down the seats as well but if you just wanted this middle compartment to fold down all by itself that's what this little tab is for if you pull on it as you can see the middle compartment is down and now if you had skis or long pieces of plywood you have no issues getting that in here all right ladies and gentlemen so that is gonna wrap it up for this video i hope that you guys all picked up a few tricks here and there if there was anything else that you had a question about write it down below and i'll be more than happy to help you out again don't forget to check out those amazon key flop covers they are super super cool and very very useful because each bmw key does cost 300 plus dollars and you don't want to ruin those stay tuned for the next one if you guys have any more video ideas or tricks that i may have missed simply comment down those below and i'll be sure to get it in 
part four this video series is doing really well so more likely than not we are going to have a part four of this as well so definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already stay tuned have a great day and like the video thank you